The office where Bob does banking is always opened and closed by Sue. Hi, my name is Andreas Hense and this video is the first of a series on resource patterns in YAWL. As you can see here, there are 43 of these patterns and they have been published on a website and in a book that appeared in 2016. I'll put a link to both resources in the description below. The YAWL workflows and the associated organizational files can be found on GitHub and the link is also in the description below. Today we will look at direct distribution, the ability to specify at design time the identity of the resources to which instances of this task will be distributed at runtime. You can see the behavior in the following flash animation. Here we start with opening the office and the work item for opening the office is allocated to Sue, directly to the user Sue and Sue starts executing this work item and then completes the work item and the workflow goes on and allocates the next work item to Bob and Bob will do banking and um, as soon as he has completed he will complete the work item here and then the next work item of closing the office goes again to Sue who will again start executing it and finish it and then the whole case is finished. In YAWL we can do this by system offer to participants and system allocation random choice as you can see here in the screenshots of the YAWL editor. So here our setup is we have four windows. On the left we have the flash animation again. On the top right we have the YAWL administrator here and um, on the bottom we have two YAWL windows. One is for Sue on the left hand side and one is for Bob at the right hand side and Emily doesn't have a window here because she's not involved in this particular execution of this case. So here um, in the YAWL administrator we can already see that we have a workflow specification called direct distribution already loaded into the engine and uh, as I said already, you can find this in the supplementary material, so you can download it on your own and then use that for doing the same experiment or different experiments with it. And what we will do now here as the administrator, we will just start the case and this is case number two that is launched now. And if we go um, in the admin view, we go to the admin work list, we can see that the first work item is allocated to Sue Allen. So if we do the same thing here, we have exactly what we can see here. Allocation to Sue. This has already happened. And now we have to refresh the work queue of Sue. And Sue sees a work item called Open Office and allocated to her. So she starts this one. So we can start it here at the same time. Then she opens the window, she can do some modifications, but uh, let's say she just completes it here. And then we have the completion of the work item and now the next work item is allocated to Bob. And so if we go to the administrator, we can see that this has been allocated to Bob. And if Bob refreshes his work queue, he can see that he can do banking now. So he will click on it and now it is started and then he will eventually when he has finished doing banking complete this work item and then the control flow goes on and we have now the next work item close office allocated to Sue and Sue refreshes her work list and now she starts this work item she completes it and then the case is finished. This is a very simple pattern. In a practical setting, there needs to be a good motivation for hard coding a particular user into a workflow specification. An alternative is role-based allocation, the topic of the next video. Thank you for watching.